new tour tonight? Yeah, this is the um, the UK um, leg of the Humans Who Live Dream Into Action tour. So we've recreated the two albums in their entirety from the original multi-tracks. And um, we've been doing it in the States and we did a special gig at the O2 Indigo last year. And there was such a demand for it that we're kind of taking it around all the O2s around the UK. Yeah, fantastic. What was the process like of getting it already? Was it like beautifully clocked and in time? No, it was, it was very complicated because a lot of the tracks um, some of the stuff had been done, most had been played to a drum machine, but a lot of the stuff like bass lines and stuff had been played live. And then there was other tracks where some of the drum Simmons stuff had been overdubbed. So um, certainly for the first album, we had to, we had to re-time a lot of stuff so that we would be able to then chop it all up and you know, get it in sync for Ableton. So what are you packing tonight then? Okay, what are we doing? So it's a three-piece three -piece band. We've got um, electric drums over here. Uh, we've got Howard's rig in the centre, and we've got my rig here. Um, I'll run you through what we've got happening. Um, I'm running an Ableton Live setup. Um, I've got all the songs um, all broken down into separate parts of the songs um, and separate sections of the song. So we've got control over all the aspects like bass, sequences, vocals, um, percussion, all those kind of things. And then we've got separate um, control over the different sections like bridges, choruses and stuff. So if we want to kind of go off and change the arrangement, we can just do that at the drop of a hat. So I'm using the launch pad over here on the right. It's primarily for clip launching, although I do use it a little bit for some of the mixer functions as well. Um, so this is my clip launcher. On this one here, I've set up with Automat MIDI a dedicated set of um, note numbers, which I use for things like um, beat repeat and the Tornado um, Sugar Bites Tornado effect, so I can kind of do some manipulations and stuff. Um, so that's those two. Um, the controller in the middle here, I'm midied up to Howard's Phantom, so um, yeah, so I can play some of the keyboard lines, play some of the extra keyboard lines, and also sometimes when Howard wants to go out the front, I can take over playing parts that he doesn't want to have to be shackled to the keyboard for. So that's how that works, and I also do most of the track mixing on here as well. So. I have um, extra um, effects and filters and kill switches and all that assigned to the controller. So what's um, the audio situation going on then? I mean, how yeah, I've got a little underneath here, I've got a little Motu ultralight. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. And it runs bus, the whole rig runs bus powered and um, it's been fantastic. Um, what else do we do special? We run the vocal split into this system as well, so I actually control all the vocal effects like delays and reverbs directly from within Ableton. Wow. So everything's clocked in time and all the specific delay types um, can, can happen at the right time. And what we is, also... So what does front of house do? Well, he, he, does, <laughs> he does do some additional stuff, more, you know, specialist stuff. I kind of do the kind of the stuff that the, the desk isn't very good at. So big modulated reverbs and all that kind of thing. Um, and we've just added a... Um, we've got the TC Helicon um, the Voice Live 2, again we take another split from the vocal and um, in Ableton we run a dedicated channel of um, MIDI clips where I've actually programmed in the harmonies for Howard. So when Howard, when there's a part of the song where we need harmonies they automatically just get generated. And oh so it, it runs the MIDI to the unit that yeah. plays the chords? Right. Yeah, so, so basically automatically harmonies come in where we need and double tracking and um, all that kind of thing. So, and again, I, I can control it from the floor. So if Howard wants to do a section of the song where he doesn't want that incessantly going on, I can kind of just override it. So what do you do with your nose? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, good question. The other thing I run is that it's just not here at the moment because it's charging up. I have an iPad there, um, which I have um, for notes. And also I run a few things in Lima on the, on the, the Lima controller. Ah. Okay. Uh, um, which I'm starting to use more and more. So, are you using that wirelessly? Yes. Yeah, right. and it's been it's been working at this short distance. This is kind of the first tour I'm really giving it a run. So we'll keep keep watch this space. So uh, the ultralight, are you running that um, Firewire USB? Firewire, yeah, and okay. it just and as I say, I've been running it. I've been using one for four years, and it's never never. It's and perfect. all the tracks are happening off the drive in here. Yes, yeah, so I've just actually put a solid state drive yeah. in there. I was, have been running just the 5400 drive, but I just found a couple of gigs where we had super sub bass. Yeah, I've heard that. that. Just it, it a couple of the head, yeah, the just, head parking. just a couple of times the clips have erratically triggered, so I just put a solid state drive in and it's just like fantastic. And um, over here, the totally new thing for the tour, we're running, um, we're running the Roland um, oh, yeah, digital mixing system. 
So um, we've got a very small out front desk and everything runs from the stage to the front of the house on an Ethernet Cat5 cable. And we've all got our own personal monitoring. We can control, I mean, it's very advanced. We've, we've got total control over every aspect. We've got four band EQ for every aspect. Right. And is it, uh, is it running a Roland system out front as well? Yes, so, and also the out front guy can override it if he wants and take control of the whole system. So it's quite, quite so, refreshing not to have yeah. a venue out front. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. And it's just literally on stage four Cat5 cables to the side of stage and two to the front to the back of the room. So we can, we've got our own special Roland stage boxes, which, are, which basically, so we don't have to have DIs or anything else. So it's all very clean. Um, straight in. Yes, very straight in, yeah. Um, so that's my rig, um, Howard's rig. Got the, the classic KX5 being customised. Um, uh, we've got um, the Phantom G8, which we've been using for a long time now. I mean, it's a workhorse keyboard, you know, it's, yeah. it's not an exciting analogue keyboard, but it's great for getting lots of sounds together. And um, we sampled a lot of the old sounds from the records and put them in sample memory. So we've got a lot of Juno patches and stuff that we've made. Um, the ubiquitous lyric prompter. Yeah, yeah, because it's 26 songs, so um, it's a lot to remember. Um, and we're running on here, Howard's running the, the Artura Jupiter 8V, okay. um, linked to this Novation. We did, for the first time we did the concert, use Howard's original Jupiter 8, but we had, his one broke down in the rehearsals, we got a spare which broke down in the sound check, and then we had another one from a fan who lent us it, so we thought, that's the last time we're going to do that. That's about 40 grand's worth of repairs, right? Yeah, there. so, um, and it's been brilliant, you know. Uh, it pipes in, the, interestingly, we um, we use it in quite an unusual way. We take it directly out of here so we don't have to faff around with sound cards and stuff. And it goes directly into the inputs on the Phantom. Uh, so and that allows us to um, to um, change the EQ and eff effects in it within each patch. Uh, so it kind of can give it a little bit of sort of after mixing. Excellent. So that's that rig. Again, Howard's got his own personal monitoring system. Um, and then we've got Jonathan. Hello. So you're handling the beats? And I am indeed, yeah. And, um, and... There we go. It's good to see a pair of Simmons pads. I don't they're think fantastic, they're aren't they? The fantastic. World. Yeah, do you know what? And these were uh, supplied by the Simmons Museum in Germany, <laughs> which, uh, if you can believe that there is such a thing. But no, they're fantastic. And they're great. They're exactly right for this, this sort of gig where you, you hit them and they just sound loud there's no sort of great velocity control and then you got a brain going on uh, with um, as well, no the the, the 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 so the rig is um uh this is the trap cat which is made by a company called alternate mode who make a smaller version of this called the drum cat uh which you might have seen uh that's kind of been, been the, while, the industry they, yeah. standard yeah since i mean since the the late 80s really and that that still is pretty much the, w one of the most full featured drum uh, trigger interfaces so that's just just MIDI um, information coming out of that I've got the cat uh, pedals down there which look a bit odd but are perfect for this um, you know they're lightweight they take up very little space um, and they, uh, they springs. yeah I mean they're, they're a bit odd to look at but they're perfect and they, like I say they, they, they kind of fit into any sort of small space and then we've got the Simmons pads are running into a little Alesis trigger IO um, which is just sort of you know, cheap and cheerful, sort of, uh, yeah, but but yeah, bomb-proof and solid as a rock. And, fast. and uh, yeah, no, it's great. And and you know, that's what you want. You just want it to, to trigger hard and not get not get sort of odd odd triggers going on. Sometimes sub bass in a gig like this can trigger it, but there's there's none of that going on. So that's what's that's what's that's what's triggering. And what's making the sounds over here is um, main stage, which is uh, running. Um, so however many kits there are, 26 or so, different, different kits all running on the AXS24. And then I'm also running the hats. Um, so the, ha the hats on uh, Howard's albums are all done live. So I've got a uh, tune track, uh, Superior Drummer 2 hats. Uh, yeah, and then all the, uh, all the samples are done in the AXS24. And it's all rooted separately. So I've got my own reverbs and EQs on, on everything. So, so that's all um, coming out of another one of That's all coming out of the, of the Motu Ultralight Mark III again, which is great and sort of, you know, rock solid. And again, um, got, the, got the Roland system here. Uh, something that uh, Robbie didn't mention, which I think is a real sort of plus point with this. And I, I've used sort of most of the other digital systems that are out there. And the, the great thing about this is that the converters are actually in the stage box here. So you're only analog. <laughs> 
for a meter really and then and then the converters are in here in 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 right. the pre's here so everything is digital from that moment until it actually comes out of the speakers which is i mean the the sound quality that we're getting in our ears is so crystal clear you know I because you haven't got any kind of fat subs or anything have you got a kicker in the kicker? no not at all i kind of i don't really go for that very much actually i generally i find them to speak a little bit late so I'd rather hear the attack um, in, in my in-ears, which I've got here actually. I've got the ACS in-ears, which are amazing. And uh, you, you just really want to hear the impact of the kick drum rather than necessarily needing to feel the weight of, of, of that movement of air. Um, so uh, yeah, it's great. And the ACS has got enough bottom end to, to not really need a sub. So how are you so. handling song patch changes? Is that happening from Robbie or are you? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm doing it manually. Um, you know, it's literally just a case of stepping, stepping through like that. There's no particularly complicated patch changes needed uh, because I've got enough pads yeah, on there to, yeah. There. So for songs, for instance, like Specialty, which have um, basically got three, three kits, one for the um, intro, one for the verse, and one for the, uh, one for the chorus. I can move, you know, I've got three bass drums, three snare drums, just spread around the pads, because I've got 26 pads on the kit, so I'm not, I'm not short of, uh, of surfaces to play. So yeah, no, it's great, it works very well, and you know. Are you using a lot of the sort of classic analog samples? I mean, are you kind of uh, they're all samples off the record. They are all, ev everything that I'm playing has, was taken off the two inch and, uh, and has been um, remixed by Robbie, so any EQs or, or, or effects are, uh, are actually recorded to the sample. Uh, there's some reverbs and delays that I'm doing myself and some of the EQs are done, but the, the basic sample is, uh, is exactly as it was on the record. So how's your metronomic brain coming on then for this? It's, uh, <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> it's, uh, no, I'm, and this, this rig is perfect for that because so much of that sort of performance like a machine is to do with how the gear responds. And um, you know we've, we've managed to program it in such a way that it does behave like a machine, so long as you hit it in time. So um, yeah, are it works very well. Are you along with anything at the same time, or are you pretty much in control of all of the rhythm stuff? Uh, it sort of varies on a, a on a per song basis, really. Some of the stuff it's just not possible to play. There might be sort of, yeah. you know, drums and some loop and some weird percussion all going on, and I just kind of had to make a call on what I was going to play, which is normally the loudest thing, so normally the kit. But um, there's some other weird stuff as well going on. You know, there's some some uh, some strange samples being played and, uh, and stuff. One more thing, what, um, yep. what's your preferred metronomic kind of sound? What would you, what do you use to... Uh, I'm just, at the moment, I'm just using the Ableton, um, the, uh, the blip, blop, the, blop, blip, blop. The blip blop, blop, exactly that, because it does cut through. But um, yeah, anything that cuts through but also doesn't take up too much weight okay. in, the, uh, in, the, in the mix is perfect, really. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I think you're on stage. <laughs>